word of it, Josh. Uh, yeah, hey, how are you doing today? Heard word of it, Josh. Hey, how you doing today? It's old Bill Tanksley over here in Glenwood. You happen to have one of those double five eighths, three quarter inch, mm. double platinum, mm. chrome reverse Molly screwdrivers in stock, sir? Uh, how you doing there, old Bill Schneedley here, American Sound and Light Plumbing Division? He's 400 pounds and he was buying muffler bearings? Heard word of it, Josh. Uh, excuse me. Muffler bearings? Did I stutter? <laughs> All right, you guys have a rope in stock? May I be excused to go to the bathroom? Heard where this, Josh. Casey Kasem here with America's Top 40 Countdown. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Do you happen to have in stock a 45 radio needle that would work in a Panasonic player from 1978. Do, do, do you do you have a? Mm -hmm. I know I talk kind of funny. Mm -hmm. I like the way you talk. Well, thank you, sir. I like the way you talk too. Yeah, we're friends. I've got to lower this basket down into a hole in the ground. Uh, yeah. What kind of bearings are you looking for? Uh, I'm not. With possibly. 150 to 200 pounds depends on the size of the person. You're, you're not looking for any bearings? Uh, no. Hey, a question for you. What size are you? Are you about a size 12? Size 12. Just answer the fucking question. Don't you hurt my dog, mister. The unburied, buried dead. The unburied dead are coming back to life. Are coming back to life. My name's Mark Warman. I'm Darren Kirkpatrick. And we get paid to bring dead cars back to life. We work with my best friend, Royal, and my son-in-law, Josh. We search far and wide to find how a car was built, where it spent its life, and how it died. After that, we bring it back to look exactly the way it did on the day it was born. If we don't kill each other. You shut your mouth before I actually punch you out. Can I leave a handprint on your face? We've got a lot of things going on right now at the graveyard. Um, our purple sunroof challenger, we got a few more pieces we're waiting to come in so we can do some more work on it. Our black phantasm cuda, um, we got a lot more parts in for it now so we can start putting some of them on. Our Daytona charger got all of the sheet metal installed on it. All the welding is done, frame rail, upper cowl panel, all the back body is done. So it's ready now for body and then paint. And of all the cars that we've got, uh, all of them cool in their own right, I'm most excited about getting started back on the 71 Phantom Cuda, the car that started the whole thing. One of the very first things I like to do before I start actually doing the work on the car is make sure all the parts are here. In some cases, like with sheet metal, it takes a while to get them. So I sat down today and I wrote out my entire list of what I believe to be replacement panels on our Phantom 71 Cuda. Well, there you are, Mark. I think that's about it, actually. I think so. That's all the AMD stuff anyway. Fenders and stuff on here. Mm -hmm. Did you forget the right fender? Nope. Got the right fender. Did you get a good one somewhere? I sure did. No, I got the original. I had just finished my list with AMD of the parts that I suspected we were going to need. Uh, Darren Downer came in, of course, to shed his joy and happiness and tell me that I needed to order another fender for it because he didn't think we could repair the original right-hand fender. We're going to try to repair the original one. Do you remember anything about that? when it's watered up like a pop can. We're repairing it. That's what we do. Last time I checked, we're a body shop. You're gonna waste your time. Not a waste of time. The only thing that's a waste of time is the 45 seconds I just spent talking to you about it. Let me go show you on this car. You're the boss, right? Okay. Uh, so that was a good chance to take him out in the graveyard and show him exactly what I plan on doing with the fender for the 71 Phantom Cuda. This is the fender you're going to repair, really? It's the exact fender we're gonna repair. Oh and it's my, perfectly it's a waste of time, really. Just buy a fender. Should we, should we try? Well, maybe the fender can be fixed, but it's just a total waste of time and resources around here. We got better things we can do. Buy a decent fender, put it on the car. This is exactly the same thing. This is what you did on your car. His car, Darren's car, needed a little bitty patch, right? Like just a little baby patch underneath where the battery eats the metal away. 
Instead, he puts a whole apron in, well, butchers it. We did. You know, we can look around and find a good used fender for the car, or we can buy a brand new fender from AMD. And they're very nice fenders. We've used them in the past. Why not use it on this car? I could buy one. I could buy one right now. I could pick up the phone and call and order one. OK, I want to know whether or not I can fix it. I want to know whether or not it's humanly possible. Don't you think well, since possible, so much of the metal is probable. unrepairable, we should at least try to repair it? It's still solid. Shouldn't we at least try? No. In his brain, uh, it, there's no reason to even try to fix the fender. But that's part of his naysaying horse crap. That's what he does. He's a downer. He doesn't know what it's like to fight for the right reason. He just gives up for the wrong reason. You know what? I'm you can take your Debbie throw, Downer I'm crap. I'm going to throw this away when you turn your back. It's gone. Throw you it save, away. You're going to save a lot of problems around here. And I will punch you between your E6 and E7 vertebrae that you say are ruptured see, already. C. C6 and C7? <laughs> yeah. I'll punch Cervical. you right in the C6. Yeah, OK. It's going in this crap. It's gone. That fender's already gone, buddy. We haven't done a running, driving, moving car at Graveyard Cars in over a decade. Gosh, well, that it. isn't the prodigal son. Had some folks call me up a while back with a 1970 Plymouth Barracuda convertible. And they were asking me if we had uh, time to do the restoration on it. And, and my first response is, we don't. We're real busy. That's when they spent a little time with me on the phone, going over some of the details, some of the history, the things that, why this car was particularly important to them. And at the end of that conversation, I had to agree. Uh, it's an amazing story that I think needs to be told and shared. And I'm honored that they reached out to us. So the least I can do is make room and time to do the car. So I said, yeah, bring it out. Let's get this car. The Little Barracuda is just a remarkable car. It's got a lot of original paint, a lot of original patina to it. It is uh, it is a convertible. That's all exciting. Um, great story behind it. But to me, uh, I'm probably most excited for the fact that you can hit the key and the engine starts and runs. We haven't done a running, driving, moving car at Graveyard Cars in over a decade. Oh, no. What do we have here, Royal? Oh, cool. Look, Darren. It's my favorite color. I guess ugly. Since the shop's already full, uh, I really felt like I needed to get out and tidy up and make room for the new arrival Barracuda convertible. Uh, so while I was doing that and working, I look out front to see Royal and Darren are daydreaming and drooling over the new car. That is horrible color. I guess oh. they didn't, I guess whoever bought this didn't have any choices of just any other color except ugly. Oh, I'm sure they picked this color. I don't think anybody picks this color. <laughs> oh, Royal, please. It's got a hood like your car, flat. Oh, a big block, wow. Why do you suppose the owner's inside with the broom sweeping his own floors and the two two stooges are out here looking at this car? You don't need to be worried about this yeah. car, Tigers. My favorite you don't car. need to be worried about What's this, this car. I, I came out and seen there's another car parked here in the parking lot. I wondered what the deal was. So I talked to Mark. He's taking over the project. Another full-blown restoration, which I don't think at this point in time we're ready for. It's you a got, customer's car oh from no. Alabama. Can you talk about that? You've got enough cars apart, don't you? I think we've got a full plate here at Graveyard Cars right now. Mark should not have taken the car on at all. I know we're real busy with the seven or eight other cars we got going. We're not tearing it apart. What's it sitting here for? Well, this, because this they would like us to drive, restore right? the car. You gonna make a floor plan? It runs and it? drives. It can, it, yeah, it can be moved around. It can be driven. It's really nice to see a car in such really running condition, let alone, you know, great shape that won't take us so long to uh, to restore. Got to put dirt inside it, put flower, flowers in it for a flower pot out here or what? I mean, anyway, need... as time goes on, I'm absolutely more convinced than ever that somebody is going to murder Darren. I mean, you don't need it around the here. Point well, being, it has, nothing, to drive. it has nothing to do with either one of you morons right now. You'd be working on my car you're so supposed this to, ugly green. You're supposed to take a, a broom and actually be sweeping. If Mark wanted to work on another car, I thought we needed more work. My car's been out there sitting patiently waiting for years. Why not work on it? Now that I think about it, I believe somebody will kill him much sooner than later. Darren, if it wasn't bad, we wouldn't be probably repairing it. This is exactly what I was talking about earlier. Here we go. You're the Bondo Bandito, OK? All you want to do is slip Bondo on something. Body men yeah, and frame right. men for the last 100 years have been fixing things. They don't always just replace them. You replace them when you have to. In this case, we have to. Uh, the frame straightening bench is not the most beautiful piece of equipment in the shop, but it is a workhorse. Uh, its job is to straighten frames and unibodies that have been bent and damaged as a result of an accident. Basically, in this particular application, what I will do is suspend the fender in between two towers. I will connect the towers at the front and the back. Those towers have chains connected to them. So as the towers go up in the air, 
the chain spread apart. Each of the three towers has the ability to pull five tons, so that's 15 tons of collective pulling power, way more than we'll need for our little fender for our Phantom Cuda. Once it's out and in traction and at the length that it's supposed to be, I stress relieve the metal so that when we release the towers, the fender stays where it's supposed to. Hey, Mark, I got a great idea. Weld it. Let's call AMD. Let's not call AMD. You're not all there, huh? <laughs> it's cool. OK. Yeah, I've seen Mark shave some pretty rough stuff. Um, I don't know about this one. Time-wise, it might be better to call AMD and just order one. I think he's, he's hurting it worse than he's helping it. Each time it falls, it just destroys the fender more. I don't think you see what he's accomplished, do you? No, I don't see how it really. So I'm right. There we go. I'm right, right? That's yeah, what I said. Right, Thank right. you. I'm not going to give Mark a hard time in regard to straightening and trying to repair the fender. The proof is going to be in the pudding when it's not repairable or straightenable in the end. You know, the structural integrity of the fender is long gone, and it won't be there when Mark attempts to straighten it and repair it. I don't know what he's doing. Halfway done, fender starting to straighten out. You're buying Quiznos. No, Mark. Yeah, you're buying no. Quiznos. Quiznos sounds That's half good. Of it. Then if I'm not able to save it, I'll buy you a steak dinner like I did last. No, time. you're buying. You're buying lunch. Quiznos. If it doesn't work out, it's not working out. We're hungry for Quiznos. We're halfway home, and it's, it's looking junk. good. It's junk. It's not any good. It's junk. Darren Downer's whole point in life is to bring people down. Even if he thought the fender was repairable, and I thought it was junk, he would say it's repairable. Why are you throwing it away? It's his whole job. Okay, let go. Both pumps off. I wish we should actually. Can you hold this, the fender for me? Do this on something. Sometimes it's actually going to be on a car. We can show a real repair on a car. You know, on a quarter or something. Uh huh. You're playing house with this. I know, Darren. Everything we do is a waste of time well, unless we're working on your challenge. Waste of time. I don't know if I'm doing more damage or. I can taste that free lunch already. And I hate saying I was right, but I was right. I know I give, I appreciate Mark's perseverance, but it was never going to be right for the car or anything. So it was just actually it was a total waste of time again. <sighs> and we weld a tab on here. And we weld a tab on here. And we turn the fender sideways. And we try to stretch this open. And we stress relieve the middle of this we can fix the top of it. I think we can fix the top. I think we can fix the fender. I think we can make it look good. We might put a piece in here where it's the worst, but I would never feel good about it going back on the car. And the main reason is I was noticing as I was hitting on this stuff, it's lost a lot of its integrity. Once we had the fender up and mocked into position, started making our pulls, it became evident, more and more evident, that I, w I was at least half right. I, I always knew I could probably repair it. It wasn't, it wasn't so much that. I wanted to actually be able to save it and use it on the car. I just don't feel comfortable doing that as the safety issue. I'm glad you've come to your senses. No, it's I'm not that I I'm praying for you, OK? Go ahead, Darren. There is a God. Because I have noticed one thing. When somebody starts talking around Darren, he will talk over the top of them until he gets his point across. So the best thing you can do. So what you're saying is you're going to buy a fender? Just have this one for him? Yeah. He's also going to buy his lunch, it looks like, too. We really appreciate AMD making a finish for the car now, and that's why they make finish for the car, because not everything is repairable or should be put back on the car. Bottom line, I was right, Mark was wrong, lunch is good. You know, AMD is sure making a lot of replacement panels now, aren't they? Look at this catalog. Take a good it's look through it, because full it's... of stuff. They're only like five minutes from here, so that's kind of good. Uh, by the time I get there, you know, I don't, I, don't mind, uh, I don't mind doing what my lips say I'm going to do. If I lose a bet, and I don't really think I lost that bet. I, I think I kind of half won it, but whatever. Uh, I tell everybody I'll buy them sandwiches, I'll buy them sandwiches. So uh, we're en route right now to Quiznos. I'm not supposed to talk and drive or something. I ain't. There's some silly law about that. <laughs> okay, this will be real easy since I'm driving. Will you just text me that? Let me talk to uh, Darren real quick. What kind of sandwich you want? You want to text me that so I have the information when I get over there? They don't have Chinese food. Still, uh, still a sandwich shop. They got soup. Send me a text or I'm coming back with nothing. I'm not, uh, not interested, okay? I could put it on the car if I was a butcher like you. I could put it on there and not care about the structural integrity of it. Why is this kid doing that? What the f is wrong with that kid? Did you see that crazy s 
I'm not talking to you, fool. Let me ask you something, camera boy. You ever do 80 miles an hour in a 20? <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. What's the best sandwich in the world? I got a look. I have a lot of Italian in me, as you can tell. Kind of really look like the Soprano. The, um, Big Tony from the Sopranos. So is the chicken carbonara? Is that good stuff? Favorite. Just by far, right? Bacon Alfredo, mozzarella cheese. Got white wheat, rosemary parmesan, or garlic focaccia. Let's... Personal favorite, I'd go with rosemary. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. well, let's do it. I trust you, man. Today we're working on a 71 Cuda, so I lost a bet, so I have to buy lunch for everybody. <laughs> I didn't really lose it, but I'm just kind of letting them feel good about themselves. That is the one good looking sandwich. Okay, so yours is kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's mine, right? What can you do? All the other ones actually have the writing on the front. Have a great day, bye. Great eaters work more than your life. This is something that Kimberly is doing as a tribute to her father. Oh, that's this is a really neat car, Roll. Only made 59 of them. This is one of 59. Thanks. It's a really cool car. No telling how many of them are left, probably just a handful. 33 tube rail automatic. Yep, how nice. Many four huh? speeds did they make? They made zero 33 four speed cars with the tube rail. Really? They're all automatics with the tube rail. Oh, yeah, the Brady Bunch. Mrs. Brady had, she had a 70 71 Barracuda convertible. Remember it? A blue one? On the yeah, it was blue. Hers was blue. Yeah. Come on, God. Yeah. Very nice car, huh? Yeah, that's cool. I've hey. always I've always always wanted a convertible. Hey, we could call you Cindy and you can drive this around for Cindy Brady. Cindy? Cindy Brady, remember the little girl in there, little blonde headed girl? What was the other girl's name? Marcia. Marcia. We call you Marcia. What was the other one's name? Jan. Jan. Wow. Good job. Yeah, good job, good. Darren. I don't get it. They're sitting there in a customer's car on my time talking about which one of them is which Brady girl. Come on, guys. I was sitting in it earlier. I like the, uh... what? Oh, we no. need to clean the mess Marcia. up. We got to get going. I don't know why you're even worried about that. Yeah, right. We're, We're just checking it out. No, you just finished your little fat lunch. Okay, I'm saying that I asked you guys 20 minutes ago to clean up the mess. You clean up the mess from the fender, okay? I don't know why you're sitting in a car. You haven't earned the right to sit in the car. No offense, I'm no, not being a jerk. I've been getting a lot of heat about being jerky. Here we go again, looking for the guys. What are they doing? Goofing off in the convertible. I got Rain Man in the passenger seat. Yeah, I'm definitely an excellent driver, excellent driver. Darren, you're sitting in there. You look just like Dustin Hoffman and Rain Man in the passenger seat of that convertible. I got Chrome Dome over there wondering what it'd be like to be driving the convertible with the wind blowing through his hair. He has no hair. There's the first thing. Go get some hair, and then we'll talk about letting you drive the convertible. You can't drive a convertible. How are you going to drive around with the wind blowing through your hair? You're bald. All the time, they should be in the shop helping me get cleaned and organized for the week's work. Are we really? Shouldn't we test it? Why don't you test drive the broom that's in the closet down there? and test drive my toolbox and these tools, start putting stuff we back want to so I can right go on to the rest of the parts rack. Like door dragon. Man, that's like your door in your on. car. We'll get right on that. So I can go back. Come on, let's go. Let's get these tools picked sure, up. Buddy. I'm gonna go get my list so I can go out to the graveyard, find out what parts we're gonna be using off of one of the donor cars Crunch. out back. I also want this area Crunch. swept. Uh, you know, on a similar note, not that it matters because it's immature, but if there were somebody there that were one of the Bradys, uh, I'd probably be Greg. Good looking older brother, driver's license, chicks hanging off me all the time, that kind of thing, so.
Uh, we're basically done with the fender for the 71 Phantom Cuda. We know where we're at on it. We're not gonna be able to use it on the car. We'll use it for some artwork, something to hang behind the car once it gets home uh, to the owner. But we are gonna need a fender for it. I know I'll end up getting a good quality used one or a new one from AMD. A lot of times you get lucky and I do happen to have two 71 Barracuda bodies that are in really nice shape. So I'm just gonna head over to the graveyard now and see what I have in the way of recyclable parts. I happen to have Dumb and Dumber with me, uh, but hopefully maybe I could get Royal to do the hard work crawl on his back underneath the car. That's usually when I bring somebody like that. I could do it by myself, but the physical labor part of it and the, the crappy part of it, like there's cat poop and dog poop out there, so I don't mind them guys rolling around in that. There's cat <laughs> dog shit out here. Yep. Darren, yep. get up. Little, I need help. <laughs> little of Mark, little of Darren. Like a little bit of Royal there. You, Royal. Go to the bathroom Royal, inside. I need your help. Nobody get wants up, to Royal. see you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> get up, Royal. <laughs> <laughs> What are we here for? All right, here's what I got. So here's what I want to know. Somebody needs to shimmy underneath there and take a look at the frame rail and the trunk floor and the trunk floor extensions. Because anytime I can put in a big section out of one of these cars, that's what I want to try to do. Like if I could get a floor section with frame rails on it, I might opt to do that because I can put it all in as one unit. All the original spot welds are still in place and that goes a long way. It's not so much that I'm trying to save money on new parts. I'm just trying to use as much authentic OEM material as I possibly can. I think it's okay. This Boy, the not frame the rails are beautiful. This is not the one. How's the trunk floor itself? Well, you know what? I don't know. It's got some Probably rust. not going to be good. It's going to be really pitted. I would love to put one big section in. God, that thing would go so fast. Well, I don't think you're going to get it out of all of this. Okay, yeah. But still. What about the quarters and stuff too, buddy? But if the, how about the outer wheelhouses? You know what a guy could do is he could take the outer wheelhouses out of this thing Take the whole back clip off the car, take the quarters off of it. Well, I don't know. The Actually, the quarter's not bad either on that side. Are you sure you want to cut up a car like that? That's what this one has got it's for. A, it's, it's, it was a six cylinder car and I'm not overly thrilled about doing it. But at the same time, that car's a thoroughbred. 446 barrel, one of 108 made. And so if I'm gonna donate quarters and floors, so you could, I just I'm just thinking though, the, the trunk floor has to go in as one piece. That's the problem. I mean, you could do the two piece. So we know we can't use the firewall or the upper cow panel. We need to save the original ones. So what we're talking about possibly doing here and is using aprons? the aprons and the rails I've got the original upper tie bar section with God, the VIN dude, number in it. I was about to call the still... cops. Well, look at there. Oh my gosh. Josh, well, Judas. Well, it isn't the prodigal son. Judas Iscariot. Hey, buddy. Hi, guys. Hey, Josh. How are ya? Can I borrow 30 Good. pieces of silver from you? Oh, it was good to see Josh. Um, you know, I missed him all week. When he's not here, we take all the brunt of everything. Uh, he kind of take lightens a load a little bit when he's around. No. I smell Oh, it's royal. All right. Actually, you know, there's some right down there. There's flies swarming all God, around. am I close to it? Yeah, oh. you're stepping all <laughs> over. <laughs> you're stepping in it? it? Yeah, it was great to see Mark stepping in his uh, cat's feces. Lord of the flies. Yeah, it kind of humbles him a little bit. Trying to blame it on other people. He's trying to blame crap on everybody else when it's his own crap. Yeah, but it's, it's not on my thing. Flies. <laughs> what are you doing? I came to see if you guys wanted a hand with anything. You really are yeah. legitimately here to help? Yeah, of course. Dude, yeah. I never left to begin with. Had those all those years to help, help. he didn't help then. Well, sure looks like you're not here from about eight to five. Although I will say the end results are the same as if you're here or not. <laughs> Do you want my help or not? Hey, if you actually- that's not the way. Eh, shut your hole. Hey, Josh came back, he wants to help out. That's fine with me, there's plenty to do. If you want to help out, you could go in with Tweedledum and work on the black car. You interested in doing that? Yeah. Okay, well, you why don't you do that? Because we've only got about 15 minutes. We just need to look out here and figure out what rest of the pieces. We're actually trying to figure out what pieces we're going to use off of these cars for the 71 Phantom car. Right. If you want to go in there, I could use a little bit of help on it. Yeah. All right. So you should find laid out on the bench. I was just getting ready to do it. The horns, if you could get the horns on, if you could take the radiator and the fan shroud and install them, the header panel and the header panel bolts, brand new ones are right there. Okay. So you can put the header on it. Why don't you help him? You're so not doing anything out here. So where's the bolts to the radiator and the shroud? What the hell? 
<laughs> Did you hear something over there? What the hell? Good to see you, Josh. Where are you been? You too, buddy. Thanks. I just told them. I'm here to the spirit, the spirit you know, but right there. Yeah, I feel right you, there? man. Uh, we have cars on top of cars, so uh, I'll find a project for him, and uh, his penance for coming back like that is I'll let him work with Charlie Babbitt for a while. Things were quiet when you were gone. We all got along. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. We all got along when you were gone. Yeah. There's no fighting. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to move the car inside, raise it up on a hoist, and just confirm that the pieces we're looking at, such as the rear frame rails, inner and outer wheelhouses, trunk floor extension, center trunk floor section, upper deck filler panel, and the front aprons and frame rails. If they're all as good as they look out here, then uh, we're going to go ahead and cut those off of the car, uh, send them out to have media blasted, get them cleaned and treated, and ready to go in our Phantom Cuda. Well, this car is <laughs> extremely special to my wife. You did all the physical work. Really? You, you know what? Put the car in. So we got everything that we needed out in the graveyard as far as inventory on used parts that we think we're going to be able to recycle. Uh, I sent the two Stooges inside to start doing some work on the quadruple black Phantasm car. We're only going to clean up the mess from the 71 Cuda, and uh, this should be pretty close to the end of the day. We've already got these two bolts here started. You see, we're going to put the radiator in it. I'll help you put it in. Let's grab it. Cool. So how's your job going? Good. It's a bald spot. Looks like a bald spot. Royal, it's your head. Oh, wait. I got the dome going the wrong way. Now, you tell me, with a couple of bozos on the side, that doesn't look exactly like Royal. It looks like a duck bill. You're bald. It's OK. I'm comfortable with my baldness. All right, let's get a socket and take the two remaining things off of this. I'll start hanging chains. There's nothing wrong with being bald. Telly Savalas was bald. Kojak? Who loves you, baby? Yep. You need to start having, oh, you should have a lollipop. You should always be having a lollipop. Sure. You got it? You usually understand what we're doing here. Yes, See these I little do. these little tabs? Yes. Put down the bolts down here, OK? OK. And this radiator is worth more than your life. Yep. Buddy. Okay. My nice side's in. Is yours in? Yep. Start one of those. So tell me about your job. It's going pretty good, you know. I just deal with nuts and bolts. Tell me what you do. Well, I sell fastening supplies. Um, I'm a greeter. You go, hey, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Is that what you Something say? Like that, yeah. Here, you want to tighten those up? Yeah. Not to bang everything with it, okay? Yeah, I know. Okay. I missed you, Josh. I missed you too, buddy. <laughs> no, I figured out what was wrong here. I miss you like the last toothache I had. <laughs> <laughs> I can be the remedy for that. Just like that. They don't fit airtight. Hey, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, back to work. It's hard. We're gonna get yelled at. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, you I might. know. You yeah, might. You might, but I won't. That figures. One smaller, one larger. So after the fender was straightened out, Royal and I were cleaning up the mess out in the shop, putting the chains away, the tools, the binders, the lockdowns, the clamps. All that was about left was sweeping up the floor, so I decided I'd go inside and check on uh, the two stooges, Dumb and Dumber. That look pretty good to you, Mark? It's a little low. Are you tight on one of them? Is the front one tight or something? It might be. OK, loosen it up just a little bit. And, it, and it's a good thing that I did go in and check on them. Uh, they were about to lock down the last set of bolts that hold the header in place a quarter of an inch high, which is going to make everything on the front end not fit right. Um, it's a fairly simple process, and it's easy to cure. But it's, once again, why you don't, why you don't send Charlie Babbitt and Lurch out to do a job without supervising it. I, I, I learned my lessons. Uh, uh, dude, I'm pushing. Oh, Come on, man. Yeah, Darren, thank you. I need with my help. There you go. Yeah, no, no thanks to Mark. We did all the physical work. Really? You, you know what? Let's wipe this down, Screamer. Let's wipe this down, yeah, Screamer. Man, look at all them right? calories left on this thing. You know what? It, it's too bad that stupidity can't be like money. Okay, they could buy islands. Josh and, and Charlie Babbitt could buy their own island somewhere. You ready to put the horns on? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Go ahead, pal. 
Come on, buddy boy. Did you prep these horns, paint them all up? No, Mark did. Okay. Did these, are these already been on the car? There's a footprint on here from the paint, see it? Dude, those are, those are from a 1970. Those horns are from a 1970 car. Why are you trying to put oh, those great. on Oh, great, great. Hey, take this for a minute, would you? Nice. Much Where are you going, dude? Much troubles I've had with him over the years. What he are you was... talking, dude? The Darren. Don't look at me, cat. Oh, that. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to get a Hulk on this, Darren? Darren, huh? I just got off the phone with the owners of the 70 Barracuda convertible. Uh, they're planning on being here first thing in the morning. So I'm really glad that we got the shop cleaned up and now I'm gonna have Josh move the car inside and prepare for their visit. Why don't you and Royal get the shop ready. Josh, you get the Barracuda pulled around and into the first bay where the bin pack is. Oh, you said Darren oh, could drive oh. that back there. Come on, guys. Who's driving the car? Josh is driving. Twiddle dumb? That's me. That's what, that's what I'm saying right there. Oh, you Why said Darren could drive it. You're going to make well, him wait? Ball. Come on, guys. Don't be jealous. Let's go clean the shop. OK. Oh, okay. well, quit horse. Remember what happened when you horsed around the other day? Don't horse around, sometimes you're gonna get hurt. <laughs> I know, dude. Okay? I know. You let the car in? Oh, yeah. Here you go, bud. You, you have a, do you have a driver's license or permit? When, I think yours needs to be revoked, you old bastard. What is wrong with you? We treat you good. Look at how you talk to us. More? You do what I say. Now that way. Now did I go straight? Now this is a good time to listen. Right there. <laughs> uh, here's life lesson number 717 for the idiots. One task, one job, walk away. You're reflexible. Dude. You know, You're nice. Okay, yeah, buddy. Heisman. Three they can't hear. They cannot listen. I think they want to talk Let's about Dude, Darren's in my head, bro. Humans. Josh is Stupid a human man. The look on his face when he saw it running was just worth every bit of it. I just don't trust anybody else to do it. We sold our cow. I don't need your bull anymore. Yeah. There they are. Hi, Kimberly. Yes. Mark, nice Hi. to meet you. So the cook showed up today, and we had a really great meeting. Very first thing, of course, is Darren had to play the game. Let's see your funny socks. Oh, oh here we go. Funny socks. Funny oh. socks. Immediately goes up to Tommy and says, Auburn fan, right? Because they're from Alabama, I guess. Well, I'm yeah. in OU territory, <laughs> and I have Auburn socks on. <laughs> I was able to take them around, show them all the cars in the shop. So let's look around. Show you let's around. Do it. Darren, try to be on your best behavior. And this is our beautiful 71 Cuda. Quadruple black, 344 speed. It's gorgeous. That's our Superbird. That's got the original Original motor, original transmission, fender tag, and broadcast sheet. Um, here's our purple sunroof uh, Challenger. Factory power sunroof in plum crazy and a real RT. This is our Charger Daytona over here. When we go back and we duplicate the spot welds like we've done along here, right. and then they grind these down, they do have to do some plug welding on the outer ones, and you put your seam sealer. There's, if you use the right stuff, you use like the AMD sheet metal, mm -hmm. like your hinges are from AMD, I guarantee it, because yep. they're the only people making them. Fits perfect, looks perfect. You go to a show and they think, wow, that's a survivor car. And that's that's always been our goal is to make things look like a survivor. And then we got your little car inside. We had their car raised up in the air so we could talk about some of the things that I had seen the other day when it showed up. I know you guys don't want to, but have you ever thought about subframe connectors or some kind of connectors on this to tie this convertible together? They, they don't do that. The factory... Now, I know you know more than Walter Chrysler. I know a little bit Walter about Chrysler, Chrysler, things, okay, Mark? Quit running you see the down. reinforcement? See these pockets right here? See this, this oh, piece right here? They added this for being convertible. And so when people go out and they make convertibles out of cars that aren't real convertibles and they don't know that goes there, I just look underneath there and say, that car, well, the VIN will tell you too. Right, but, right. but that has to be there. And then the because front one. Because it has one, no rear post support? Yeah, it needs that. Now, the, here's what's cool. 
Your car's just a little 383 two barrel, right? 260 horse, I don't remember what the horse right. rating is. Okay. So they didn't do it for the, they didn't do it because the motor would twist. Right. They did it because the roof was gone. Right. But if you had a CUDA that was just a regular hard top CUDA, okay. but with a 440 or bigger, it got them too. Uh -huh. So the, the main thing was those cars will twist under extreme torque or if you take the roof away. Yeah. So uh, just really had a great visit with them. And it's, I like to educate my clients as to what to expect. And that keeps my hand to the fire, make sure that I do exactly what my lips say. And in the case of their 70 Barracuda uh, L code 3 to 3 2 barrel convertible, I told them it'll look exactly the way it did when it was on the assembly line in 1970. I'll do that. That's my job. Well, this car is <laughs> extremely special to my wife. My name's Kimberly, and I'm a registered nurse at our local hospital. And we found Mark by watching the show Graveyard Cars. and. Sent him a message on Facebook and one thing led to another. This was my dad's Barracuda. My dad bought the Barracuda in 1978, two years before I was even born. And I spent my childhood in the car, especially in the summertime. My dad coached my t-ball and softball teams and we went everywhere in it um, with my dad and my sister and just grew up in the car. Well, in 1995, when my sister was killed in a car accident, my dad just kind of hung the key up and didn't drive it anymore. It was like, it wasn't enjoyable to him. Um, didn't drive it for several years. And then in the early 2000s, he wanted to get it, start getting it restored, but the money just wasn't there. Um, he was laid off work twice. He was helping me go through college and the finances just weren't there. And then in um, October of 2009, my dad was diagnosed with stage four prostate cancer. And they only gave us a couple years for him to live. So didn't think much of the Barracuda even then and noticed him getting sicker and sicker and decided that we had to get the car at least drivable for him before he passed away. So about a couple months before he passed away, we took it and got it running, got the motor, you know, worked on. And he couldn't drive it at that point in time because his illness had gotten so bad, but um, he could still go for a ride in it. And yeah. The look on his face when he saw it running was just worth every bit of it. And it was just so great to see him see his baby driving again. And so he got to he got to go for a couple rides in it before he passed away. It's one year to the day that uh, he has since he's passed away and and I uh, find it fitting that his his baby is in in your shop awaiting its restoration. After walking around the shop and Seeing all the cars that Mark works on, I just, I feel like he's here with us. I feel, I can feel my dad with us. You know, I know that he's here. Yeah, I think the car is going to look, look amazing when it's finished. Your dad would be proud of it. Yeah. He would be proud. It, these are humbling moments, I think, more so for me than anything else. I, I know I run around and I, I get the bandy rooster syndrome, but it, it brings me right down to a real level and to a personal level when I realize that I've been entrusted to help somebody make their dreams come true, or in this case, I mean, this is, a, this is something that Kimberly is doing as a tribute to her father. I mean, who else is gonna, I just don't trust anybody else to do it. I went out to the shop to lock down. Uh, I always do my final walkthrough. Josh was over at the Barracuda Convertible looking at it, and that was really great because it gave us an opportunity to do some talking that uh, we needed to do while nobody was around. They're nice people. You know, I think it's kind of cool people come that far out, you know, just to tell their story and I think it's all right. I think we get crazy. Hey, yeah. You're still Judas. You know that, right? Then I'm sorry, like, I didn't want to leave. I don't want to leave, you know? Like, this is, I consider this my full-time job still, so, you know, but I just have to make ends meet at the moment provide for my family and but but when you quit you could see where I got confused that <laughs> you weren't gonna sort of be here well I I am and you know I I didn't ever plan on leaving you know what it was I'll tell you exactly what it was 
when she was telling the story about her and her dad in the car and she kind of teared up like that, I think those are the moments, that's what Grieve Your Cars is about, about telling the story. I was hoping one day I might be able to sit back, pass the torch to you as we've talked about, right. and have those same kind of moments where you're remembering me long after I've shuffled from this mortal coil and said, you know, he, he was a great guy. He, he had his own little way of doing things, but he, you know, that's what I was hoping for. Well, I'm not leaving. Like, I'm not leaving, so you know those I know, hopes. I know, the, the, you coming in and helping was, meant a lot, and I appreciate it. So well, I'm, I'm, I'm here, man. I'm not going nowhere, and I mean, you have my solemn word on that. Is it, you having fun down there? Yeah, you know, it's, it's pretty good. It's uh, gotta be monotonous as hell, nuts and bolts all day long. Yeah. But yeah, whatever. whatever. Been dealing with some <laughs> crazy customers calling, and... <laughs> yeah, do my job sometime. Yeah. Get the same exact things. Let's blow, let's get out. I had a guy call and uh, ask for some rope uh, heavy enough to hold a body and lure the rope and body down into a, a, a ravine, a hole. You should have star 69 his ass. Yeah, or checked into a mental facility. I'm the peacekeeper. You know, I, I see an opportunity. Uh, I like to keep the playing field even for everybody. Josh got to pull the Barracuda convertible in. I think it's only fitting that uh, Royal and Darren get a chance to drive around in it as well. Hey, Royal, at least one good thing about it, your hair's not getting messed up. You know? Well, you always wanted to ride an E-body convertible, didn't you? This is stupid. You're really, so louder. Real, this is really stupid. Yep. I thank you, Royal, for this. Now, you're the one that wanted to drive the car. Well, the car, oh, no, I know these people right here, these dog people. Hi, Randy. You know, we had a good week of graveyard cars that got into the 70 Barracuda convertible. For Kimberly and Tommy Cook. Mm -hmm. Awesome story behind it. Awesome, great story. I enjoyed it. Now, very very sorry? touching story. Aren't you sorry you gave me crap about the car coming out when we're so busy? Yeah. Okay, I agree. All right. Mark repaired the fender for the 71 six barrel car. I did get the fender yeah. straightened out. We'll be able to use that as a, uh, like a little trophy piece for the car. Won't be able to go on it because it's not quite strong enough. Uh, Charlie Babbitt and Josh got an opportunity to uh, put the header panel, uh, vertical lock support. Um, you got the horns on the 71? No, didn't get the horns on it because they were mine. What? The horns were mine. I just found them out in the yard. I didn't know where yeah, they came from. Yeah, out in the yard of my car. Well, they're still in the yard. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and on top of that, we got all the parts inventoried and ordered from AMD for our 71 Phantom Cuda, 446 barrel, four speed, EV2, Hemi Orange, one of 108 ever made. 354 day in the rear end. Yeah, missed that. That yeah, makes you the hero. <laughs> Look at me, everybody. I came okay. up with one part. In addition to that, uh, what else did we do? But Josh came crawling back on all fours. Yeah, Josh came crawling back on all fours. That's true. And and probably that your highlight, certainly my highlight of the week, um, you got an opportunity to drive a 1970 Plymouth Barracuda convertible. Pretty exciting, That's huh? not what I call driving it. We were on the back of the rollback being driven around Springfield. Were you in a Barracuda convertible, yes or no? Yes. Were you driving around the city of Springfield? Around and around Springfield. Okay. So you were driving around in a Barracuda convertible? Yes. <laughs> how, how, how would you say it did performance-wise? Um, Good gas mileage? Oh, the gas mileage was great. I kept smelling diesel, though. What's that about? I don't know. <laughs>